Welcome to the Screen Rant Pop Culture Fashion Show. Here, we're going to break down some of the greatest costumes in cinema history. No, I'm not talking about Princess Leia's iconic white costume from A New Hope or Captain Jack Sparrow's amazing hat, but rather the costumes that did the impossible. They became even more iconic than the character wearing them. Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is a huge deal right now thanks to James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Although Gunn's movie was sorta kinda a sequel to David Ayer's Suicide Squad, his Harley was definitely more like the one from Birds of Prey. That film showed the emancipated Harls as a Deadpool-esque force of chaos that pretty much does whatever she wants to do at any given moment. Harley Quinn in the OG Suicide Squad? Well, she was mostly just Joker's girlfriend without much of an identity of her own aside from the overwhelming desire to get back to Mr. J. So the most iconic part of Margot Robbie's first performance wasn't so much her character as it was the daddy's little monster outfit that was purchased by approximately 20 million cosplayers the day the movie came out. Harley's latest big screen role showed her in an iconic red dress with combat boots and a leather costume that called back to her original outfit from Batman the Animated Series. As cool as Live Fast Die Clown was, I don't see it quite comparing to the craze that was Daddy's Little Monster. Catwoman is one of the most iconic Batman characters of all time. As cool as Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman costume was, and believe me, it is burned into my brain, it is nowhere near as iconic as the character herself. Selina Kyle is a legend and she always will be. Patience Phillips, though, well, she's a mess. Now, this version of the character wasn't so much a cool new adaptation of one of Batman's greatest foes slash love interests as she was some weirdo cat mutant who liked to flirt by playing bizarre games of basketball. Literally nothing about this character landed with anyone, including Halle Berry, who will tell anyone how big a mistake that movie was. The only thing that did land about the movie was the now infamous Catwoman costume that is the most shameless comic book costume to date. And that's saying something. Oh, the Fifth Element is one of my favorite sci-fi films of the late 90s. It is a masterpiece of practical effects, costume design, and prosthetics. Pretty much every frame of this movie features something amazing to look at. So it's kind of hilarious that the single most iconic thing out of the movie are the thermal bandages Lilu wears after she's reconstructed. Costume designer Jean-Paul Gaultier went above and beyond designing alien clothes, Gary Oldman's ridiculous suits, and every single colorful costume he could get Chris Tucker to try on. Yet the thing you see the most out of The Fifth Element is Lilu in the costume that is essentially a series of high-tech band-aids woven together into a makeshift outfit. Whenever I think of the movie, I think of the scene where Bruce Willis basically goes diehard on a pleasure cruise full of invading alien pirates, but I'm a person of very classy intellectual tastes. In 2010, there were few films that were as big of a deal as Darren Aronofsky's Black Swan. The psychological ballet thriller saw Natalie Portman finally get the Academy Award that she so rightly deserves. Now though, over a decade later, it's not a film that gets a lot of ink anymore. If anyone talks about the film or does a story about it, the image that sticks out is always the titular black swan outfit with the silver eyeshadow. Weirdly enough, she's only in that particular outfit for a few short minutes considering the entire film is about her psychologically breaking herself to prepare for becoming the black swan. That just goes to show you, even when you're a genius director that has put together a visually arresting film that immerses you totally in the psychological torment of its main character, a decade later everyone is probably just going to remember the outfit she was wearing on the poster. If there is one actress who has a talent for wearing an instantly iconic look, it's Uma Thurman. I mean, maybe not in Batman and Robin so much, but in movies by Quentin Tarantino like Kill Bill and Pulp Fiction. Despite the fact that Mia Wallace from Pulp Fiction is only on screen for a handful of minutes, her black and white costume with that iconic haircut is on more posters than Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta. Then when she finally gets the lead in the Kill Bill duology, everyone just remembers that one scene where she brutally chopped up like a hundred people with a katana. No, there wasn't really 88 of them. They just called themselves the crazy 88. You know that Uma's got gravitas when more people associate that yellow jumpsuit with her bride character than they do with the one and only Bruce Lee's character in Game of Death. 
2011's Drive took Ryan Gosling from a superstar that everyone adored to a superstar that everyone adored just a little bit more. It showed that Gosling wasn't just a heartthrob from The Notebook, but an impressive, dramatic actor who could carry some serious intensity. That being said, it's been years since I've seen the film, and I genuinely don't think I could tell you a thing about the plot. I know that he drove a car in the beginning, and that there was a thing with his neighbor, and I think he beat someone up with a hammer or something? Anyway, the one thing that everyone does remember about the film is that iconic silk jacket with a scorpion on it that looked simultaneously super stylish and like the character picked it up off a rack at Goodwill for 15 bucks. Even today, I'm pretty sure this is the most iconic look Gosling has ever pulled off, including the infinitely gifable image of him judging Steve Carell for his Velcro wallet in Crazy Stupid Love from the same year. Oh, Jurassic Park! It's one of those movies that makes me wish that I had one of those memory eraser pens for Men in Black just so I could relive it for the first time like it was 1993. The movie has a ton of iconic moments, from the legendary T-Rex breaking out scene to the velociraptors in the kitchen scene that traumatized me forever. That being said, it's not a movie that's usually remembered for its costumes. That is, except for Jeff Goldblum's Ian Malcolm. For some reason, he decided to drop into this dinosaur-infested island dressed like he was about to go to the club. This look peaked in the now legendary moment where Malcolm leans up with his shirt wide open. That shot has become a full-blown sensation that the main man himself, Goldblum, recreated when he finally got his Hollywood star. Now, I got a lot of flack in our last Lord of the Rings video for the way that I pronounced Sauron, but I just want to let you guys know that's how you pronounce it. It's not Sauron, okay? So, Sauron is often referred to on lists of the best movie villains of all time alongside contemporaries like Darth Vader and Lord Voldemort. That being said, very few people know anything about the Dark Lord except that he's the guy in the giant suit of armor or the floating fiery eye at the top of his tower. I mean, almost no one knows that Sauron was a servant of Morgoth after his defeat by the Valar. The Silmarillion is only like 350 pages, people! Maybe Amazon's Lord of the Rings series will flesh out Sauron so that casual fans will know just how much he deserves his title as one of the greatest villains of all time. The Back to the Future trilogy is one of my favorite movie series of all time. The first movie especially is one of those where pretty much every single scene has an iconic moment or a quotable line. That success is owed in no small part to Michael J. Fox's Marty McFly, who goes from a normal 80s kid to a 50s parent trap style matchmaker to a hoverboarding adventurer through the future and finally a gunslinging cowboy of the old west that Clint Eastwood would be jealous of. So it's kind of weird that out of all of those looks, the one that has made pop culture history is the one where Marty has the double denim look with the puffy red jacket. Marty McFly is one of the greatest time travelers in cinema history. He's so much more than one jacket worn over another jacket for some reason. Tom Hanks may have played more iconic characters than any other actor in Hollywood history. I mean, he's played a baseball coach who wouldn't let anyone cry on his field, a castaway who became best friends with a volleyball, and about a thousand ridiculous things in Cloud Atlas. Out of all of these looks, though, the one that is definitely his most iconic to date is that gray suit from Forrest Gump. There's just something about how humble that suit is that informs who Forrest is despite his life story full of presidents, rock and roll legends, and millions of dollars. And on the exact opposite end of the Tom Hanks spectrum is his look from The Da Vinci Code that just made me want to give him a comb for two hours. Now, this was actually a seriously hard list to put together. Honorable mentions that almost made the list include Buddy's elf costume from Elf, Freddy Krueger's legendary striped shirt and fedora combo, and Jessica Rabbit's dress that defied all the laws of physics from Who Framed Roger Rabbit.